you're looking for a podcast about all things hunting, especially in the South, you've come to the right place. My name is Weber Herbison, and hunting is the ultimate addiction. And welcome back to the Ultimate Addiction Podcast. We just got back from the NWTF convention in Nashville. Well, at least a few days ago at least. So we're going to give you a little recap on kind of how that went for us. Kind of some things we liked, some things we saw, uh, maybe some things we didn't like. And then after that, we've decided we'll give you a turkey hunting story. So... Without further ado, what'd y'all think of the convention? There were a lot of people there. My <laughs> the first gosh. Thing I a lot of people. I was at one point Saturday when we first got in there. I was like, if this thing isn't under some kind of fire code or building code violation, then it's got to be very close. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Like, Saturday, you yeah, couldn't fr- even... Friday wasn't bad. Friday was fine. But Saturday, there were so many people... Saturday. Even if the aisles weren't that long, yeah. it took forever to get Holy down. Holy cow. Like, it was unbearable. They were, I mean, you talk about somebody with some crowd anxiety. I got, a, I got I get a little bit of crowd anxiety, and Saturday I was like, dude, I got to get out of here for a second. Yeah, like at one point I was like, about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, I was like at the point, it's like, if one of y'all say, hey, y'all want to go, I'll be, I was kind of at the point like, yeah, let's go. For sure. <laughs> we'll come back. I think everybody was there, but nobody wanted to say it. Yeah. I mean, we came there for a reason. I, I mean, we we pretty much saw the whole thing Friday is why, yeah. is why we weren't, you know, too honed in on staying Saturday. But yeah. holy cow, it was packed. I so say you, you probably could go through in one day. Yeah, yeah you definitely you, could go through in one day. It would take a full day. day to go through one through. It's pretty large. Yeah. I mean, how many booths were there? 1,500? I don't know. At least the numbers went that high. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it was really there was a lot of people there. Tons of tons of freaking booths. Uh a lot of cool people. Yeah, a lot of famous people. Uh I didn't get to watch the Grand Nationals like I wanted to. I had my times mixed up, so I got in for the last caller and or me and Patrick got in for the last caller and then uh, they had a call off for fifth place and got to see that and it was still extremely impressive uh, but we didn't get to see much other than them naming who won which I was disappointed I thought it started at two it ended at two uh, but got to see a little bit I saw a clip of Dave Owens yesterday or yesterday I guess it was yeah this morning and that was impressive extremely impressive it like it fires me up to be able to see somebody do that. And he got third, which is crazy, because I'm like, golly, if that got third, I would, I'd would i love to see first, which Matt Van Sice wins it every year, just about, and he won it again this year. So, yeah, We were talking about what does he do all year round? <laughs> he sits there and blows on that mouth call. <laughs> mm-hmm. Does he even have a job, or does he just work that turkey call all year? I mean, golly, I guess, I guess you got to be – Dave sits up there and he like swaps back and forth constantly with those calls. So it's, I assume you you know you tune the ones you want for what you want and uh, you know just figure out what tuning sound you know how much stretch in that latex gives you what sound and what you can work good and whatnot. I know Dave makes his own calls. Obviously, that's what that's what I use is the dang Penhody call. So I'll uh, say so that's something like. Interesting. As you get older, you think they're just using the regular old Primo's call, but no, they're all handmade calls. Oh yeah, like they. I you know, can't buy what they're using off the shelves. And the the crazy thing to me, Michael Waddell said back in the day, kind of before he got big, before he maybe before he even started working for Realtree, he was making his own turkey calls out of condoms. Like, yeah, we'll promote the same thing. And Michael Waddell said, I got third place in the Grand Nationals one year with a glow-in-the-dark condom. Mm. Like, that's freaking nuts. He's like, I'll go to the gas station. I think and, that's the cheapest way to get rubber. I, I mean, or latex. latex, yeah. 
I mean, had to be. Probably, I mean, nowadays you can buy like the little strips. I've done it before. I have a bag full from when I used to make calls, but I wasn't very good at it, obviously. Or <laughs> I'd still be making them. I had a little cheap rig, and I could make one, but it wouldn't sound very good. Uh, what was y'all's favorite thing? Or the coolest thing you saw? I don't know. It was... I had two like pretty cool moments so like I guess my first cool moment was when um ran across this dude there that had a booth and he had a booth at the uh, wildlife extravaganza that we used to have in Jackson yeah. back in the day at the old trade center and I had bought some calls from him like the last time they had that there and I told him I was like I was like you know I know you don't probably remember me but I bought some calls from you in Jackson probably over ten years ago I know it was over ten years ago because I couldn't even drive yet. Dang. And I was like and he was just like kind of like dang that's pretty <laughs> cool and like so I bought I found some calls I like from him bought some mouth calls and then um, another cool thing was uh, getting to meet William Lester with yeah. the uh, trumpets you know especially from him being from Mississippi and then you know also being affili affiliated with like delta state back in the day that was pretty cool and getting yeah. to talk to him and him just like showing tricks with how to use them and all that they that could was, run them dang that was pretty sweet trumpets they well, could they could work them what was the brand of your uh the first place you went to do you remember the name of the, the calls? name the do where we bought the slate calls no yeah. the the mouth calls the do that you bought from in jackson chattahoochee game calls chattahoochee. yeah i think he's from Alabama, if I'm not hmm, mistaken. Probably. Sam Pope. That's his name, though. And we both, all, well, heck, me, Maverick, and Marshall bought uh, aluminum calls from this one guy. Uh, Sweet little rigs. What was what was his name? Uh, Higher Calling. Higher Calling. Yeah, game calls. he was out of, I think, West Virginia. Yeah, and yeah. that thing sounded nice. Yeah, I was just yeah. like, when I picked up and got the plane with it, and then I picked up another and like changed the striker, I was like, yeah, I might as well just go ahead and get this because this is just too good not to get. I got to get uh, some like sandpaper stuff, not not mm -hmm. like the core sandpaper, yeah. but you know whatever you use for aluminum and freshen mine up because I've been yelping on it so much now it sounds bad because <laughs> it's all full, it's all just flat, yeah, soft, no grip, no friction. Well, see, I've got a aluminum call, and something that was interesting to me is he said it's hard to play an aluminum call. Really? That's what it. That's what he said. But hey, like, it was pretty easy to me. I picked it up, and it went to just screaming and doing everything. And that I might be it's so loud. Do. I guess the kind of the metal in it but makes it loud, and it's it's got a good has a great sound. like it's it's very clean. Has a great turnover on that yeah. yelp. Um, yeah. I thought it sounded really good. I think I think underneath the aluminum, if I'm not mistaken, it was it's like crystal. I think that's what it had underneath. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I know, know the one you had, it. like the pot part of it was cherry wood. Yeah, Marshall's was different. And I got something different, some kind of other thing. I can't remember. I just know mine's like a dark wood, and then yeah. my striker's like a black dark wood. Mm -hmm. But yeah, talked to some people. Uh, and a bunch of people said they wanted to come on the podcast, handed out yeah. some, a bunch of stickers. Yeah. Uh, I got a. I talked to a guest, a friend of mine actually, who's in the industry, and he agreed to come on at some point. I'm not going to drop any names yet. Uh, he said, "Give him a few weeks for the, get ready for turkey season." So we'll see. That's exciting. Start getting some people on here. So what all did you buy? Maverick, I know you. I know you bought a vest, and you bought like. So, this man had so much stuff he couldn't even carry it, and so he had to dig in the trash to find a bag to carry all of his stuff I, in. I did Saturday. I was struggling there, but uh, so the first thing I bought was the mouth calls from Chattahoochee Game Calls. I bought some mouth calls from him because I was like, I got a connection to this dude. I'll give him a give him a run. I've never run their mouth calls, but I like them. They're pretty good. Uh, the next thing I bought was, which that was the most important thing I was going there to see if I liked it, if I liked it, I was going to buy it, was that um, the M2 turkey vest from Tethered. Yeah. I knew they were going to be there, and I was like, that'll be, you know, I can go try it on and see if I'm going to like this or not, for, you know, because I really went to buy it for, because, like, I want it for turkey hunting, and I want it for deer hunting, and I know, like, you can make it kind of whatever you want. Bought it, so... 
<laughs> all the, I love walking around that place and seeing all everybody walking around with their vests on. They yeah. just bought them a vest. And I, just was, walking around. I was that guy. <laughs> yeah, and they got all this stuff <laughs> stuffed in their vest. So I was walking around the convention with my turkey vest on, had my turkey calls in it, had one of them in my mouth, you know, just <laughs> acting a fool. You were just on a turkey. Yeah. The uh, next thing I bought was after the vest. Oh, yeah, was the uh, slate call that we bought, the aluminum slate calls from that guy. I did not, did not plan on buying a slate call, but like I said, it was just too good not to buy. Yeah. So I bought it. I had full intentions to go to that place, like I said, to buy the vest and possibly a trumpet call if I found one I really liked. And then that was the last thing I bought was the trumpet call. Yeah from uh, William Lester because I was just like man I kind of like these things and like they're pretty cool like they're different looking than everybody else's you know they look like they're made well yeah they're definitely like made well like you're if you break it like you you did something probably bad to break it but yeah. um yeah I bought one of them and then I did a uh, five dollar donation at lacrosse to get that rubber boot koozie <laughs> <laughs> And that's all I bought. <laughs> Me and Patrick, uh, we broke, so I didn't buy nothing but some mouth calls and then that slate call. I'm trying, I bought a cool binocular harness. Oh, yeah, we bought the binocular harness from uh, Rick Young, the dude. That's his name. Um, I was so glad you got his name because I didn't. Yeah, I kept the instructions and everything. Um, yeah, but they're yeah. pretty cool. It's, it's lightweight. I like a harness. I, did, I like a harness, too. I like but a like, harness, yeah, full harness, full enclosed thing, but it gets... If you're changing clothes a lot yeah. and all that stuff, it just gets I like, to be a pain. Like you said, I like the harness because it protects my binoculars. You know, I know they're in there and they're good, but like sometimes it can just get plumb annoying when you go to taking clothes off, putting them on, and then you're like, I gotta tote this thing, put it on. And then you get to putting a bunch of stuff, and you're like, man, I got a second backpack on my dead gum chest. <laughs> so yeah, I bought those things too, and uh, those are pretty cool. I yeah, like those things. There's a lot of different ways you can like wear them, which. This Did you see that, Weber? What? I don't think Weber was there. I was, where was I? I knew that y'all had bought them, but I wasn't standing there. It's basically like a bungee cord. Yeah, it's I all saw a bungee yeah. cord. You can hook it under the binoculars and it'll like stick to your chest a little tighter. It's pretty yeah. tight. Yeah, and he yeah. had like a little thing where you could buy, it was extra though, you could buy to oh, attach a range finder. I bought it too, just because I was like, man, this would, I was like, this would be like really good for bow hunting, especially turkey hunting, because I like, you know, yeah, I don't like a, a I don't like a, a bino whole, harness a bino for harness, turkey hunting because yeah. like if I want to look at sit down and I was like if I want to grab my binoculars and look at something I don't want to have to be trying nope. to pull them out of there I just want to ease them up and yeah, down exactly that's how I am I usually just use you know whatever comes with the binoculars for the yeah. for turkey hunting but and it was I mean it was a pretty good price twenty five and then five yeah, was, for a rangefinder attachment and then five dollars from like some noise canceling things that you could hook up to the little, the little rubber things yeah. i didn't buy them because i was like either. i was like knowing my luck like i'll bad buy them and, and like a them couple out. years later they'll be done dry rotted and broke and then like being i lost my binoculars uh, and i'd be like daggum it so i was just like nah i don't need those like just give me the little, yeah, little bands and the little attachment the little for the range, range finder and i'll be good range. sir let's see anything else uh I'll say if you haven't been, you probably need to go. Yeah. If you if you like hunting, it's it's not too pricey. Stay in in Nashville if you don't know anybody there. That would be the most expensive part. But it's thirty five dollars if you pre register for the whole weekend, and if you make a last minute decision, fifty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. If you, you, that's three days. And you get a twenty five dollar Bass Pro gift card. Yeah, at least this year you did. Yeah, no, this you year. normally do. Oh, okay. I know we used to. I know, like the way we did it. You know, like we booked it. Like I mean, we booked it wasn't like October, like yeah. that we were gonna go and stay. So like I mean, you had time to save money. You know, like booking it that far in advance, it wasn't near as bad as like booking it like a yeah. month before, or a couple of weeks before. Yeah, yeah, and you you pretty much have to book it that far yeah. in advance because there's that many people, and you know we didn't stay at the Opryland, but if you want to do that. You book definitely it. gotta book it. Probably need to be booking it like now. Yeah, as soon as as soon as <laughs> the dates come out for it, you know, or as soon as they announce the dates, they're gonna they're gonna book up quick. Yeah, like I know this was my first year to ever go to it, and I mean, I would definitely go back. It was 
it was yeah, it was, it was a cool experience you know just to get to see some of them people that you watch on like youtube and then like you hear about and then yeah. getting to meet them yeah you know just talking to them for a little bit and it's not just turkey hunting too it's a little yeah they more. had like, like trophy you know, they had, was there no big they stands had, they had deer stands you know deer hunting stuff duck hunting stuff i mean they even had safari stuff they had a ton of duck calls like yeah, yeah. there was here. some uh pretty cool deer stands i liked that i saw i think it was the uh i think they're called like the elevated yeah, or elevated something yeah. stands, those yeah. were some pretty cool little stands i wouldn't mind giving those a try one day yeah. but they are pricey though yeah they're, i mean are more than most stands. i mean any stands like those are going to be pricey honestly but yeah those are pretty cool stands one booth that i really liked was uh the maven booth yeah, yeah. those are pretty cool i'm probably gonna have to get a pair of them in the future <laughs> yeah the, the only thing i don't like about those uh like mobile hunter stands and sticks and stuff like don't get me wrong they're super light they're super easy to carry and that's the whole point but i feel like my fat boot would slip off the the step on those sticks gotta change boots you know, yeah we're not well, wearing big insulated boots anymore because whatever yeah or mobile. I yeah know. i wear big insulated boots <laughs> and it's cold it depends uh depends on the day i guess but yeah i liked it it was cool like i said oh um, that's fun definitely cool fun first experience definitely want to do it again definitely will do it again yeah um, yeah it was, it was I like, cool. i mean like i said we used to go all the time growing up and i hadn't been in a few years of school but i definitely like to go every year if possible yeah i'm glad i didn't go when i was a kid because i'd been like wanting every <laughs> turkey call and everything and yeah. just easy to spend money in there it definitely is easy well, it's like the first day i didn't buy I didn't buy well the first day I didn't buy nothing till like we were getting ready to leave and yeah, the only reason I bought something up. only reason I bought something I was like well rent the uh, tether booth there's my vest might yeah. as well just go ahead and get this one out the way yep <laughs> yeah that little aisle had a bunch of stuff yeah but yeah it was a good time if you haven't been you need to go and uh, we gave out a bunch of stickers talked to a bunch of people so if you heard about us at the NWTF, shoot us a DM. Let us know. Reach out. Yep. Keep in touch. But with that, I think we wanted to uh, tell the Waffle House story. The Waffle House Waffle House bird turkey story. Yeah. The Monday after Easter birds. Is that when it was? Yeah. It's always Easter weekend because that's the weekend I usually get hot. Mm. I have something happen big. So... Patrick and I, for some reason, did not have class that morning. I don't remember why. It got canceled or something, and it was one of those things. I don't like, remember why either. It was one of those things like, you want to go turkey out in the morning? I'm like, heck yeah! And so we got up. We go. We went to some public land, and uh, we didn't even know Maverick was hunting. But Maverick was hunting. How far from us? Thirty minutes from us. Maybe? Yeah, thirty minutes, something like that. Anyway, we get out of the truck and don't hear anything. And I had found some tracks uh, at this spot the weekend before. And so we, this is where we went and didn't hear anything. So we just kind of strike out down this road and end up, you know, kind of hear one way off. It's like, golly. Like, was that even a turkey? And, get to walk. Yeah. <laughs> just keep on walking. Let's see. So we keep on going. And uh, sure enough, it was a turkey. And every time we close the distance, that something just keeps on getting further. How far are we chasing? Freaking golly. I don't know how far. 500 yards is probably from the first time we were like, that's definitely a turkey to no. the time we shot it. Heck no. We I didn't. mean, it was a long walk. It was way more but than I 500 can't remember yards. We, heard we were like three miles from the truck. Uh, I felt like we walked forever down that road, though, before we even heard a bird. Yeah. I mean, we... We chased, like we heard him, and then we walked for 300 yards, and then we heard him again, and we're like, my gosh, how far is he? Then we went like another 300 yards, and we're like, my, is he running from us? We didn't even make a call for like an hour because we were chasing him the whole time. We was running, like just going the other way. And finally, he gets like to a highway, and we're like, he's about to freaking fly the highway. And he stopped. He got stuck by that highway <laughs> and uh, ended up going almost to some private and he got kind of on the edge of a cutover and 
the woods are just so to me what makes Mississippi public land so hard is that most of the woods are so open like a freaking turkey can get on a ridge and just see forever and so they're not just going to come in your lap you know with you in the wide open calling yeah and so what we did was patrick once when the turkey finally stopped patrick went and crawled in a like a blow down yeah, blow down and like a, a basically a brush pile and i stayed back like 100 yards from him and this freaking turkey was on fire he i guess he chased so hands. before we made our final move on the turkey he gobbled it one time and i was like Somebody's got a gobble machine yeah, down like there. Yeah, like that is not like, a turkey. Because he, I mean, just, yeah, just never stop. Like, it's probably the most I've ever heard turkey gobble. Like five times in a row, just wow, wow, wow. And we were like, holy cow. And so once we finally get set up on him, I yelped. And he was just like, I mean, just immediately answered, which is not like. And hey, he's close. Yeah. And this hunt's on YouTube, by the way. And, you know, that's just not like a Mississippi public land turkey to just fire right back at you. But he did, and I was like, man, this dude's about to freaking do it. And, I mean, he yelped like two more times, and there he was. And he sat on a ridge, a good ways from me, but I guess about 50 yards from you, maybe? 60. 60. 70, 80. 80. But he sat up there and gobbled and gobbled and gobbled and strutted and would not move. And every time he would go, I mean, I'm in the wide open. So what I was doing was every time he would gobble, I'd throw out some yelps like in the middle of his gobble. And so he'd catch like the tail end of me yelping, but not pin me because we were all in the wide open. Yeah. Where he was, he could see what he needed to see. Yeah, he, he didn't want to leave ever, and so that's why he just stood in that one spot looking for that hen. And I was sitting there, I was like, "Man, this turkey ain't ever gonna move." He sat there and gobbled and strutted and gobbled and turned circles for like thirty minutes. Felt like thirty minutes. And then all of a sudden, boom! And I was like, "Holy crap!" Uh, Patrick said, "He had me twisted like a pretzel. I didn't just shoot at him." <laughs> Uh, he made the right move, and he stuck his head out, and I was like, there it is. I'm going to shoot. That's it. And for those people, they're thinking, like, well, 60 yards is not that much anymore. Stop. I do not shoot TSS, and I had the stock <laughs> full choke in the gun. <laughs> so that was a hunting. far shot. He's old school. Patrick's still hunting in 2009. Still, oh, you don't need nothing long when you can calm to your lap. Still got that max four <laughs> yeah. camo on that gun. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick does all his calling. Yellow yeah. gun out there. Oh, yellow gun. <laughs> That's as close as he would come because he could see that thing. He's like, man, that don't look right up in his pine Magic trees. school bus out there. <laughs> oh, oh, yellow gun. But anyway, we kill this turkey, and we're like, high five, we're having a good time. We're like sitting by a tree, and all of a sudden, Maverick FaceTimes us. And we didn't even know it was hunting. And he's like, y'all, you know, y'all, y'all get one, y'all get it on film. We're like, heck yeah, we're going through all the thing, strutting and gobbling, all this stuff. And next thing we know, Maverick turns the camera around. He done killed one <laughs> with spurs as long as my freaking pinky finger looked like. How yeah. long was it? I mean, both of those turkeys. Well, those are like, the biggest they, spurs. Those, yeah, like those, that was either the, I don't know, he's first or First or second biggest turkey I've ever killed, but like so over, same for mine too. Overall turkey, he probably the biggest one, but like he was definitely a. Both of those turkeys had like inch and a half spurs. No big, like and like, sharp. Yeah, very. Mine were like big at the base too. Yeah, yep. Mavericks were like those big black straight spurs, mm-hmm. and Patrick's were those pink real curves. Yeah, spurs. real curved, but. I'll say when I shot the turkey, I could see it out there, and he had a splendid beard, little like, a little beard. beard. And beard. I was like, it's probably just a two-year-old, two-year-old. but yeah. it wasn't matter. And I was like, ah, this turkey's gonna have a little bitty spurs and get up there and <laughs> have some hooks. <laughs> sure did. Mine had a freaking robe. I think it was like it was either eleven and a quarter, or eleven and a half. It was something Jeez. like that. He was a stud, daddy. Is that the turkey you killed with that uh, like? Ten gauge? Did you kill no, it? No. You shot your turkey a long way too, didn't you? This turkey? It, yeah, I shot him at like. 
50 there, 56 yards. That's when he came in and pinned you, didn't he? Man, that dude, which I, I had educated in the day before. <laughs> yeah, you did. I'll, you want me to tell that part? Yeah, tell that story. Oh, man. So, so Easter weekend's always like a – that's a good weekend for me. I usually kill that's a turkey. That's a good weekend. Turkey. Oh, yeah. so, usually yeah, that I Sunday I kill – that Sunday afternoon I usually kill a turkey. And I usually do it pretty quick. Um, at one point, like I had done, killed like six turkeys in a row on Easter, yep, and then I too. broke it. But anyways, we were uh, at my grandma's after church, uh, eating lunch and everything. Like had my girlfriend over there, and all that, and um, we done kind of finished eating, done got real full, of course, real sleepy. <laughs> my dad goes outside, and he's like, "Hey," I was like, "What?" He's like, "There's one blown up in the bottom." I was like, oh, man. And I was like, I had planned to go hunting. Like, I drove my truck out there separate. Had all my stuff. I was like, oh, man. And I was like, dang. Like, my girlfriend's here. Like, what am I going to do there? And then I was just kind of like, hey. You got to stay here. You're going to ride home with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> you can just do whatever. Like, but I I got to go hunt this turkey. She's like, okay, whatever. No, no big deal. Anyways, they're still in the bottom. Bust me a big old loop. Loop around. I get... On the other end of the field they're in, and I'm like, I'm gonna set up right here. This is a known spot where they, where they come to. Killing tree. I've killed multiple turkeys right here in this area. It's like they'll eventually be down here. Sit there for like an hour, and like I had called up a hen, like read the script, everything. I was like, oh, you know, they'll follow. It may take them a little bit, but they'll eventually be here. Well, like another hour and a half later like i done been down here like two and a half three hours waiting Back on this turkey down i'm like i'm like dude like it's like it's like four thirty five o'clock you know like finally i was just like i'm gonna go down there and see what they do i, I was like i wouldn't have sat that long i was like i was like i can i was like i can because like where the woods were like pines but they got like a lot of underbrush in them and i was like i can skirt down the edge of this tree line and like pop out I was like, there's a drain down there. I can get in that drain or I can just pop out around the culvert. And so I get kind of, I get within 100 yards of the corner. And there's a big oak, oak tree down there. I just get directly behind. I was like, I'm just going to walk directly behind that tree until I get almost to the corner. Then I'll crawl to it. So I'm tipping. About that time, I get about 40 yards from it. And I just hear... I'm just like, what the crap? <laughs> that turkey was behind the tree, too, that I was walking behind. <laughs> and he just skidded it by me. And son, I... Was he, he ran by you? Oh, yeah. I slung the gun off the what? shoulder and boom, missed. <laughs> and then about that time, he was getting ready to take flight. I said, boom, missed again. And at that point, you know, he was he was going. I was, and I drew a bit. I said, oh, I got you now. And then boom. I missed him. I was like, oh my gosh. I <laughs> missed him three times. I was like, man, I just spent a lot of money on that turkey and didn't even get him. <laughs> so I yeah, was sitting there. Turkey. I was sitting there and I was like, well, he'll be somewhere right over there in the morning because this, you know, at that point it's like six o'clock. Yeah. So I, I got up the next morning, went and it was, man, it was a perfect morning. You know, like 45 degrees, clear, calm, everything you want. Get out the truck hop the gate at the barn as soon as I hop the gate and then you know it's like it's like 5 45 boom hammers and I'm like dang he is not where I thought he was gonna be because I was fixing to walk all the way down there where he was yesterday yeah. where I watched him fly to and this turkey down roosted right here behind the hay barn on the slough I was like man even better mm -hmm. I got a short little walk so went down about halfway through this bottom cut up this culvert got in the woods the other end of the woods he was on, and I knew there was a road going down the fence right, just skirted the road. And um, I got to where I was, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm about 100 yards from him. You know, I feel like that's pretty good. Yeah. And so, set up. I, um, I did put a decoy out that morning because I was like, I'm on a, like a little road area, you know, he probably helped. So I put a decoy out set up cut me some brush you know i got plenty of time setting up everything sitting there I'm like, okay good about 10 minutes later you know start here turkey and i'm like 
look up I'm like where'd you come from <laughs> in the tree there's you? there's a tr- there's a daggum hen in the tree above me she didn't speak or nothing she didn't i guess she didn't know i was there because it was so dark but she just did her little thing and then um about 15 minutes later you know i just see little black dots mm-hmm. coming out of trees i'm like yeah they are it's like they just flew down they just flew down on, on my side of the slough i was like even better <laughs> And so I'm sitting there, and I sit there. I mean, I, I didn't kill that turkey till like 8.30 or something yeah, like that. It, was, it took me a while to kill that turkey. It was good in daylight. And uh, he got on the ground, you know, he just shut up. For like 30 minutes, he didn't gobble. And like, I was at the point where I was like, I'm fixing to get up and, you know, like, reverse my tracks and go to the other end of the field and see. Because mm-hmm. like, I figured he done got in that field and just skirted it. Yeah. And man, I got to hearing something that sounded like drumming, but I couldn't figure it out. It was driving me crazy. I was like, at one point it was like behind me. I was like, looking behind me, didn't see nothing. And then like one point it was like in front of me, didn't see. I'm like, man, he's. I was like, he's here. Yeah, he's just somewhere. Cause in the pines, it's got so much underbrush you can't see. Well, about that time, you know, y'all know about five or ten minutes later, I gave a little yelp on my trumpet, and I heard some hens. I was like, dang, he's got hands with him. You know, like, they're still with him. And, like, about that time, I seen them. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're coming in. And I ain't even got my gun Get up. your gun. I'm just like, well, start easing everything up. I see one hen. And, the, son, they're coming on a beeline. Like, I'm like, man, they're finna come mm. way too close. Yep. Get up there, that decoy, I see a second one. You know, they come up there, they look at it, you know, do the little head thing. Still ain't seen him. About that time, like, I saw, like, a third turkey back there in the shadows. Like, that's got to be him. And uh, he didn't go the same path they did. Anyways, hens messed around a little decoy, and then they kind of just went straight, straight in front of me. Going away. Well, about that time, I just see that big old head just emerge at the end of that road where they're going <laughs> and he just like looks up and i'm like oh man oh, this ain't good crap. i was like he's just i was like i'm pretty sure like he's just right out of range and then like he went back down i was like okay we're good we're good <laughs> i start getting you know i'm i'm getting ready i'm done draw i'm getting ready to draw no, bead on click the safety oh the safety pattern safety's been off <laughs> and about that time I knew that I had ranged this tr- this big oak tree, and it was 60 yards, and he done got on the other side of it. And about that time, he stretched that head up real big. Like, he's like, he saw something he didn't like, and he came out of strut, and then he took them wings. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh-uh, mm-hmm. we got to go. And about that time, he kind of, like, turned, and he was walking away, and then I, boy, yeah. I let it rip. And he just folded right there, just gracefully. Gracefully. I got up, son. I ran. I was like, man, did I get him? Did I get him? And I was like, oh, yeah, I got him. We got him. And then I got up there. I was like, oh, my God. I done, I done killed him. Should I? Yeah. Good. <laughs> mine got got twice. Yeah. yeah. That's got I got to twice. mine. And, uh, was it that 2009 yellow school bus? <laughs> I was so cramped up. <laughs> so, I probably looked like an old man getting up out of the, <laughs> my spot. And so I was oh, walking man. over there and had to jump a ditch. And about the time I went to grab him, he got up and took off running. Oh. <laughs> Luckily, I had a shell in my gun. Usually, I unload yeah. after I shoot a turkey. And I just Boom. pulled up and blasted. The turkey had BBs all Broke over. His wing. He had BBs in his feet. Like, <laughs> man, that's, that's, feet. that's one thing that I had to learn the hard way as a kid, turkey hunting. That's one thing that's just hard for me to do when I shoot one is just sit there. Yep, no. I'm like, really like the it. only way that's happening if, like, there's multiple ones in and somebody else is with me and they're, like, in the position. Yeah. Like, they yeah. have a bead drawn and they're ready to do it. You know, as soon as you shoot, I'm shooting too. But, like, man, it's just... I've had way too many as a kid shooting. Like, I'm, I'm looking back. I'm like, yeah, I got him. I got him. And they're like pointing. They're like, he's uh, running uh, off. Yeah, ain't no doubt. <laughs> so that's the first one I've had do that. But I knew he was, I mean, heck, 60 yards with nothing special. It was a long yeah. way. Number five. It was probably <laughs> Winchester Supreme. Three and a half, number five. It was a full choke, but it was the stock. stock. Yeah. Um, yeah, the pellets in the feet were probably not from my second shot. They were probably from my first shot, the pattern being so big. <laughs> he was shooting, throwing a dang truck at him. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, my gun's quite the sniper rifle. Mine I too. I had to learn that uh, at the end of turkey season. This I miss year. them when they're. I need them far. I miss them when they're too close. Oh, I, that one that we went when we went out west. He was way way too, too close. close. Yep. I mean, I didn't kill him until he got out there at forty five yards. I had to shoot that. I shot at that turkey Another three times. I shot turkey. seven apexes this year and killed two turkeys. Nice. Uh, trust me, I understand. How far was your turkey out west? Uh, I shoot a 20 gauge Franke with a Jeb's choke and TSS, uh, small town blend Apex, and he was Shameless at. Shameless plug. He was, he was <laughs> at <laughs> 73 steps. Mm. The, 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 killed him dead and too. Like the f- it wasn't like one pellet in his head. It no. was a like bloody head. And that that died. twenty gauge I hunted with, man, I hunted with it for a while before I killed a turkey with it. And like I was just always skeptical. I was just like, man, if one's gonna get out there fifty yards, and I'm like, I'm not gonna feel confident uh-huh. in it. And I remember the first turkey I shot with, I shot at sixty five yards out in the field, like, yeah. and it was way out there. And I was just like, man, I'm just gonna send it. I put it down low on him. I was just like, just let it rip. And he forged. I was like, dang, this thing's bad. Yep. And then, like, I mean, I've killed more turkeys at a further distance with it than I did with my 870. But my 872, now, it's it's legit. Yeah. But it don't feel good either. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's got no, some weight yeah. to it. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about when you shoot it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and knock your teeth out. It's one of them, whenever you pattern it, you don't change nothing. Yeah. <laughs> No Whatever you get, you get. <laughs> uh, that's any turkey load, I feel like. The first time I went and powered a gun, I remember it knocked the snot out of me. And I was down on it, like, just not yeah. thinking much of it. And yeah, the, the worst one I've ever felt, though, is that one I shot with that side-by-side I got. Not yeah, last yeah. year, but the year before. I killed him on the last day of turkey season, too, which was crazy. But And I had hunted with that gun all year. And, like, at one point I got tired of toting it because, you know, it's just, you ain't got no sling. It's an older gun, you know. It's kind of big. But uh, I was just like, man, I'm going to give it one more try this morning. And sure enough, there's just one out there all by his lonesome. And, you know, late in the year like that, you can just get real close to him. And I got real close to him that morning. Never said a word. And as soon as he, I saw him fly down, as soon as he flew down, he was just standing out there, and he gobbled one time, and I just went, hit my little trumpet, two clucks, and like three yelps. And he came walking around out there, and I, I shot that turkey at like 45 yards, but man, that thing hurt. <laughs> like I had like, it looked like opening day of dove season when you're like 16, you're like just letting everything rip, your sh- shoulder's purple and everything. Uh, that arm. Dude, blue. my... My shoulder and everything was like purple, like instantly. Like when I shot the gun, it like came out of my hands and I caught it. And like I kind of like had to gather myself because it's like, oh my god, that just hurt so bad. And it's like I need to go up there and go get the turkey, make sure I got him. And like when I grabbed the turkey, like literally the wad was sitting there where he was dead. And I was like, yeah, that thing's legit. But I was like, we done accomplished the goal. Yep. So anyway, we. We call them the Waffle House turkeys because after Maverick FaceTimed us and we both had dead turkeys, we were like, you want to go meet at the Waffle House? Like, where y'all at? You know, whatever. We were like 30 minutes down the road. So we went and met and ate Waffle House. And uh, that was it. Got got us an all-star special. Yeah, and got real full and then got real tired. Yep. Had some coffee. Uh, Talked about it. Me and, me and old Rick had to go to class. Yeah. Do we have to do that afternoon? I think so, yeah. I, that I remember we were out in the parking yeah. lot holding them, taking pictures. There's some old dude, you could tell yeah. him looking at us in there. And we went in, he's like, Y'all done got two of them, huh? And we're like, Yep, two good ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Driving him a convertible. Something yeah, he had like some convertible. weird car. And he was he had on like, I think, camo two or something, or a camo shirt or something. something. I don't know. He hadn't been hunting. No, he had. ain't been hunting. You could tell he was a local at the Waffle House. For sure. A regular. Yeah, a regular. But we're getting about to our normal time. Yeah, I'm so. Kind of wrapping it up. But y'all, I haven't been fired up for turkey hunting, but I'm fired up now. Absolutely. That yeah. got me ready. Yeah, I'm, uh, got me ready. This got me ready. Oh, this yeah. too? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. 
Oh, I'm gonna go listen this weekend. I hadn't went and listened to them, but I'm kind of weird. I'm one of them people like I don't want to go. Too I don't. Early. Well, I don't like to go listen because I don't like going out there and, and then I hear home. one and then I can't do nothing. You know, I'm just like, well, I know where he's at. Time yeah. to go home. I don't yeah. like listening too early because then I'm like, oh, I still got three weeks. You know. But um, yeah, I, I do and then go. If and, I don't hear one, I'm like, man. That sucks. Like it d- d- discourages me. Yeah, that week of spring break. That's when I'll yeah, start. That's when I go. That's when I'll start go listening because I'm like, that's you the know, second week of March. I'm like, I'll Cup. go pretty early on public land and just you know yeah. scout some stuff. But I ain't, on places that I always hunt, I ain't going to yeah. listen. Yeah, I'm that. just like a couple more days. You know, could pick one out. I know he's over there and over yeah. there, and kind of try to figure out where. Like, okay, you know, they were here this day, so you know, like a couple of days later, they're probably going to be back here, so I need to go there. Yeah. But yeah, I'm getting getting, getting right. fired up. Some people been listening, been hearing some. So yeah, like, yeah, it's about to got some. Went and got a camera the other day from deer season. Thought it done got flooded out from the creek. Oh, those are some cool pictures. Oh yeah. man, to my surprise, I was like, look at their long beards. Yeah, and I was like, that's what I'm talking. Your I got me numbered. ready, son. I was like, not one but three. Your days are numbered. I was like, I know where y'all are at, and you know y'all are in a good spot. Mm-hmm. Well, Rick, give us your uh, closing statements. Yep. So, as always, if you like the podcast, leave a five-star review and leave a comment. I listened to the podcast today. He said they'll get us up in the ranks. Yeah, we need to move up in the ranks. So, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Tell your buddies. Yep. Um, Hopefully, as we progress, we'll get some cool people on, get some cool stories. Uh, Might have some gear coming everybody's way. A few hats and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'd be looking for that. Um, and we've got about three more weeks till hunting season is open again. Yeah. Re- so reach out if you want to get on the podcast, you know, come yeah. visit yeah. with us. Yeah. We're open to guests. If you got a cool story, we'd we'll like to hear it. Tell stories. If you want to come hunting. If you want to come hunting, we can probably work that out too. Yep. Yep. So thanks for listening to the podcast this week, and we'll be around next week. See you next time.